Now, in last night's video upload, I talked about the three ways in which you can identify toxic narcissists in order to stay away from abusive situations. Now, for those of you who watched the video, help me out recap it. Number one, the first identifier is the level of grandiosity that they display. This is the level of their self-love that puffs them up above the needs and wants and desires of anybody else around them. Number two is their level of unforgiveness. It's a very evil and wicked, hypocritical unforgiveness that oftentimes leads to abusive behavior and punishing you. And then number three is their lack of self-control, which ultimately ends up being antisocial behavior, which is dangerous for you, dangerous for them, and dangerous for everybody else around. Now, if you did not see this video yet, click the link. It's going to be around here somewhere. Check it out. It is excellent golden information, especially for those of you who do not know whether or not you're actually dealing with narcissists or not. Watch that video. Now, in this message, I'm going to blow your mind. Now, I want you to understand something. The three key things that I talked about last night, the love of themselves, the grandiosity, the unforgiveness, and the lack of self-control, I did not make that up. Nor did I get these three key principles from any modern psychological mumbo-jumbo book. I didn't get it from Nietzsche or Freudism or uh, Vladimirsky from German Nazism, whatever. Or nor did I get it from Sam Backman, nor did I get it from Jordan Peterson's. I didn't. I got it from a book that is much more ancient than any of those and has a far better understanding of the reality of human nature, and that's the Bible. I took it directly out of the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, and if you want, go and hit pause and read 2 Timothy chapter 3 right now because it will tell you word for word exactly what narcissism is. <gasps> Boom! Mind-blowing. And I'll take the Bible's version over any other version. Listen, you want to know the reality of humanity? The truth about good and evil, light and darkness, and the truth about the world we live in, it's in the Bible. There's no need to read any modern psychological studies. You'll find that it, it's an accurate representation. And now, before I continue, I want to say that my name is Kevin, and this is the Royal We, by the way. But get ready to buckle up, because we've got some deep stuff to, to dive into, and this is going to scare some of you, but for many of you, it's going to further your awakening. How was it that 2 Timothy chapter 3 was able to see the future of humanity? How were they able to recognize the narcissistically abusive patterns of people? Is it some mystery? Is it that they were prophesying into the future and were able to see humanity? No, not at all. Let's, let's rewind here. The people that were at the time of 2 Timothy chapter 3, they already understood some very dark realities of the world. They already were well aware of the reality that Cain killed his own brother Abel, and that represented the first two humans born on the face of the planet. They knew that. Wow. That's 50% of humanity at that time. Cain, one killed the other. That's 50%. Half of it is good. The other half is dark and evil and nasty. Murderous, right? They already knew and understood that Joseph's brothers in the Old Testament, Joseph's brothers threw Joseph in a pit and left him to die. They knew. They studied that. Right. And then obviously, number three, they knew that Jesus was beaten and hung on the cross as an innocent person. They knew this about humanity. So no, they were not prophesying about something that they didn't see. They saw narcissism. But what was the writing really about? See, I believe something was lost in translation. And here's what I believe was lost in translation. What was lost in translation was them saying, there will be a day, the end days, in which these things, and if you pause this and read 2 Timothy chapter 3, you'll get the list of narcissism. What I believe they're trying to say is these things will be permitted to take over. These things will be permitted and allowed in societies. And that is what's going to happen in the last days. Wow. You see, at that time, they had better protection. We're talking about a church where Peter confronted a couple who lied and they dropped dead. They had zero tolerance for funny business. Now, compare that to today's modern churches where you have no idea if the person sitting next to you is a pedophile or not. You follow me? 
I believe the biggest downfall, if there was ever, there's ever been talk about the great falling away of the church, I believe the falling away of the church already happened. I believe the falling away of the church happened the moment that the church turned into a capitalistic business model and dropped the boundaries. That was the great falling away. Anyways, I digress. And so here we are. They understand this. They understood that what they foresaw was a society of permission. And that's where you and I have been living in a society of permission where movies and people have glorified the badasses, have glorified uh, pornography, have glorified all kinds of smutty stuff to the point where good and evil have been enmeshed. Narcissism and truth has been enmeshed and we become one. And this is why we're awakening now and we're seeing it all around us. This is why many of you can't go to school without seeing and bumping into narcissists and you're going, what in the world is going on here? Why is it everywhere? It's because you're waking up to it. So why are we waking up now? This is the part that might terrify you, but this is the reality we all need to start to adopt. We're waking up because this is the time my friends, of division. This is the time of division. And if you go back and you look at the ancient texts of the Bible, they tell you exactly what's going to happen. Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. What does a sword do? It cuts and it divides things in half. Listen, I believe that God is a God of division from the very get-go. When he saw darkness over the surface of the deep and said, let there be light, the first thing he did was divide them. He didn't get rid of one or the other. He let them both exist, but divided. What does light have to do with darkness? What does good have to do with evil? Nothing. There's a reason why at the end of 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says have nothing to do with such people, have nothing to do with narcissists. Jesus said, I come to bring a sword, not peace. Members of a man's household will be his enemies. This is what we're seeing. This is what we're waking up to. Listen, you can forgive toxic narcissists. You can forgive your parents, your ex-spouse. You can forgive your old friends. But in this day and age, it does not mean reconciliation. Forgiveness and reconciliation are two separate things. Your forgiveness now means you can walk away and heal. You can turn your back and you can work on the healing process of your awakening. There is no reconciliation. That ball's already rolled. How many of you would say that there's no way you would go back and talk to the narcissist even if you really wanted to? You can fantasize about it, but deep down you know you want nothing to do with them. You're divided. You know there's never going to be any intimate, close relationship with them. You're divided. This is the great divide. This is the time in which we are living is the parable of the sower who went out and sowed good wheat and then the evil one crept in and sowed weeds and they went to the farmer and said should we go pull them up now and the farmer said no wait we'll wait until they grow together and then we will separate them the bible is one big story of separation and division this is the time of division we're in it so buckle up listen i want to be a part of your healing journey visit www.jointheroyalweed.com where you can schedule a one-on-one appointment with me. Again, www.jointheroyalweed.com. We can FaceTime, telephone call, uh, or even text message. Every Monday night is Royal We Live Chat. You can ask questions, answer questions, call in for free uh, if you know that you are live. And then also Saturday morning is an in-depth Bible study. Unlike any church you've been a part of, we are looking at the Bible from the perspective of the world being toxic and narcissistic. Join me every Saturday morning, 9 a.m., Central Standard Time. Uh, Scroll down below to the description box to find links to everything you need. And I'll be back with more videos right here on the Royal Wii.